you're a busy person with an active social life, it's hard to follow everything going on in the world around you. Under these circumstances, it's easy to lose track of current affairs until one day you look out of the window and see surveillance drones, futuristic stormtroopers, and giant propaganda screens. Welcome. Welcome to City 17. If you start to suspect that the place you live in is an evil dystopia, don't worry, we're here to help. Oh, and beware of spoilers ahead for the following games. Now here are eight signs to look out for so you know if everything's cool or if you're going to have to learn parkour and join the underground resistance. Time jump successful. Acquiring temporal coordinates. Temporal coordinates suggest alternate time stream. One of the quickest ways to check whether you're living in a bleak, totalitarian dystopia is to stand in the street and look up. Are all the buildings imposing gothic or brutalist skyscrapers like those in the city of Alpha District in Time Shift? Are the billboards video screens broadcasting threatening messages telling you to conform? Has a senior government official commissioned a charming statue of himself to brighten up the capital's main square? Then congratulations, whether by forceful occupation or just good old-fashioned erosion of civil liberties, you're living in a dystopia. Give yourself a pat on the back. Unless that's an illegal expression of free thought in your dystopia. Architecture is a reflection of the society that builds it, but construction takes time, so you should probably have noticed during the years-long process of raising up that ominous central administration skyscraper. Particularly if that skyscraper is mounted on top of a giant robot spider. No fairly and democratically elected leader ever rules from on top of a giant robot spider. I'm just saying. People get sick all the time, that's normal for any society. If the bodies are stacking up outside your window, like the aftermath of an explosion at a mannequin factory though, you're living in Dystopia City. Population? Well, not very many. Take Dunwall from Dishonored. Yes, it's got lovely architecture, great nightlife, and a scenic river. One, two, three, Good. keep them coming. Which is now full of plague corpses. Nice one, guys. It's because Dunwall has fallen victim to the Rat Plague, a super unpleasant illness that turns its victims into angry zombies known as Weepers. You. It turns out that Chief Baddie Hiram Burrows introduced the Rat Plague to Dunwall himself as a means of granting himself emergency powers to increase his control over the city and put an end to poverty. I mean, I guess poverty is now the least of Dunwall's problems? Once the city used to pulse with energy, dirty and dangerous, but alive and wonderful. If a deadly gross plague is a sure sign that something's rotten in the state of stinky town, then a super clean city has got to mean you're living in freedom land, right? Wrong. Mirror's Edge takes place in the spotless, sunny city of glass, where there's nary a smudge on the shiny windows, let alone a plastic bag or old burger wrapper on the streets. The changes came slowly at first. Most didn't realize or didn't care and accepted them. They chose a comfortable life. That's because all the litter has been swept up and incinerated by the wealthy elite and the corrupt government that works for them, presumably along with all the homeless people, stray dogs and political protesters. Be wary of policy breakers in our midst. If your city resembles the city of glass, your only hope is becoming the one thing the authorities fear most. A daredevil free runner with a wicked eye tattoo. Hope you like heights! Is everyone in your town required to get an identifying tag slash chip slash barcode or similar? Can you not go anywhere without being under the watchful eye of a surveillance camera? Another clue that your hometown might be a nightmarish sci-fi dystopia is constant intrusive surveillance. Look at the fictional Chicago in Watch Dogs. They have a system there known as CTOS which apparently logs one piece of personal information about each of the city's inhabitants. This lets the technocrats in charge quickly find out who has a criminal record or someone's political beliefs or if they have an unusual hobby. It's a bit random what it decides to give you, to be honest. Uh, sounds like a fun time. Also, there are surveillance cameras everywhere. Surveillance cameras that are apparently so easily hackable that you could do it with a smartphone, yes. But at least they're preferable to the ones you come across in Arkham Knight's Gotham City, which skip the due process and probable cause and go straight to the machine gunning you in the face. We'd never have had to deal with this if we just moved to Metropolis. Like I said... Given the Admiral's continued failure to eradicate the ISA, I motion that the Helgen military be turned over to someone who will use it more effectively. 
quick. Sneak a peek at the people in charge where you live. I want this day to be a day of mourning for the ISA. Are they wearing Nazi-style uniforms? The enemy convoy has been decimated. The weapon performed adequately. If the answer is yes, the chances are very high that you're living in a grim fascist dystopia and not just a land of dodgy historical reenactment enthusiasts. Didn't I kill all of you yet? You find yourself in a situation similar to that of the population of Killzone's planet Helgen, who are living under the jackboot of the Helgen Empire. This is an Grunt and officer alike in this hardline nationalist government have a thing for Nazi styling. Between the ubiquitous gas masks, trench coat, and military tailoring, another telltale sign was the glowing red eyes. Another telltale sign was this place being called Helgen. Another telltale sign was your leader being voiced by Malcolm McDowell. I know what this nation needs. I will give you justice. Tomorrow we launch the greatest military campaign in our history. In fact, why did you move here? You? I've seen you before. Oh, I like you. Such a resilient specimen. Even more of a clue that it's time to move home is if there are actual, literal Nazis marching around the place, like in the alternate Earth of Wolfenstein the New Order. The war ain't over. Look at all these Nazis walking around. They won. It's over. The Nazis rule the world now. They are everywhere. Man, you guys really screwed up this timeline. Now you can't even get through your morning commute without it turning into a tense confrontation with history's greatest monsters. At first glance, Bioshock Infinite's floating city of Columbia is a great place to live. Lots of fresh air, robot horses, plentiful barbershop quartets. I may not always love you. Smooth. I guess there's a chance you might trip over your shoelaces and fall 15,000 feet to your death. But apart from that, things are pretty peachy up here in the sky, right? Oh, except everyone's a massive racist. Your first clue should have been how they hold a giant racist raffle where the grand prize is to hit an interracial couple with baseballs. Time's a wasting, my boy. Why don't you give her a throw? I'm not throwing it. All right, this place is terrible. We're moving somewhere else. Uh, Earth is out. How about under the sea? They're shaking their head. I thought so much of City 17 that I elected to establish my administration here in the Citadel so thoughtfully provided by our benefactors. Look, I find it hard to believe that you didn't notice your city was occupied by an alien force, to be honest. You really need to pay more attention, maybe pick up a newspaper occasionally, because an occupying force of evil transhuman stormtroopers, like those in Half-Life 2 City 17, is the sort of thing that can really impact on your quality of life. Sincerely. Ow, don't blame me. I didn't vote for them. No one voted for them. See? Sick biological impulses. Those were eight ways to tell if you're living in an evil dystopia. If you find out you are living in an evil dystopia, then we can only hope that your alien overlords still let you click the like button and subscribe to Outside Xbox in return for your continued obedience. If so, please do both those things. Thanks, bye!